Hey guys, Brent Old Show. A few years ago, I was at the White House taking an architectural tour. I was in the East Room and I fell in love with the door header and I decided I was gonna to try to build it. So we're gonna look at elevating a doorway with a federal detail right from the White House. Today, come join me. All right, guys, so we're spending time in the shop uh, because it's really important that we learn from the past and we're able to duplicate it. Being able to challenge ourselves and looking to the past is a great way of doing it because you see things that we don't do anymore. And so it's just like, well, how would I build that? And that question, how would I build that, is kind of a cool way of improving and, and elevating your skills as a craftsman. As I said, I was at the White House in the East Room. It was redone a number of times and in my research about the East Room, I realized that it was built in the early 1800s, McKean Mead and White. Okay, if you follow my buildings and brews and you study the Victorian period, you're gonna learn about McKean Mead and White. They were the most famous architects from the early 1900s and they did everything, okay? They redid the White House at one point and they redid this room. And over this doorway, okay, is this beautiful header, architrave and this beautiful header that I fell in love with and you'll see the picture up. And so over the door head, they had this, this Indian head, which, you know, harkens back to Louisiana Purchase and all of that stuff. You have the Indian head nickel, and then these, these little swags and little leaves right here. And so there's this beautiful pattern that I had Wassel carve. And so it is the, the little panel that's gonna go above this opening. And I just fell in love with it. I thought it was beautiful. It has this header that just kind of has this gentle little arc. And so I said, huh, let me try to build that. It was harder than I thought. <laughs> so let me show you how to break it out. Let me show you how I went about doing that and uh, dig into these details. Remember our classical entablature is made up of three parts. You got the architrave, the frieze, and the cornice. And I'm hopeful that you are starting to learn these terms and take them in and realize that it's not a big deal, okay? Architrave is just your door casing. Frieze is this you know, flat area in between there and the crown, okay? Now, if we go back to this door header, right, that we built up in the last video, it had cross-headed corners, a simple frieze, and then our cornice, okay? The cornice is made up of three parts, a bed mold, which is that lowest part. It's a supporting mold. We've got the corona, which is this flat area here, and then the cymation, okay, this, this top molding there. So, simple arrangement. This thing is the full entablature over top of the door, totally elevates it, right? So, architrave, freeze, cornice, get used to those words. And bed mold, you know, that's a supporting mold that goes underneath, right? I just want you to start practicing this lingo. I made up this little uh, example here. And what we're gonna do is I just wanted to draw this out, how this is gonna lay out, because drawing it out on a piece of paper really helps you see it in your head. So you end up building it on paper before you build it on the wall and it really helps out. So one thing I'm gonna do, right, is I've got this, this panel in here and it's gonna sit on top of my freeze, right? And so this whole assembly goes in here and I'm like 39 and 3 8, okay? I've gotta cut the back piece of this freeze, right? And then this panel's gonna sit on top of it. So I'm gonna cut a piece that's 39 and 3 8 and this panel's gonna to go top of that and then the, the cornice goes above that. My panel's gonna go sit right on top of it. Now I've gotta cut this bed mold, which is right here. All right, so I'm gonna cut this over top of it. It's gonna come back across like this, and look, it's gonna undulate out. It's gonna kick out, go over across this, go back down, and back down, right? So we have kind of this undulation in this cutting. I'm gonna cut this into 45 and go around that, and it's really going to help kick out and express this door header. So the great thing about working on paper, right, is we can actually lay out this whole door. And because my cap is arched, I'm gonna to need to figure out what the radius is on that and, and how to cut that out. Now, I know that my door is, and I'm working here, so I don't have to go up and do, draw on the door, is 39 and, and 3 eighths, right? So I can mark on here uh, 39 3 eighths. 
I know that the center line of that is 19 11 16 so I'm going to mark my center line on here 19 11 16 right now I've got a center line okay now I, I need to figure out what my projection is, right? What this cap, how it's gonna move out and how far it's gonna move out. This freeze panel right below that is three quarters. I'm gonna mark that off, okay? And then I know this, this panel is five eighths, so I can mark that off, right? And so now I know where my panel is and because there's my center line, I actually know where that's gonna be. There's my freeze behind there. Now. Now, I'm looking down at the down from the top now. You see that? So I am trying to figure out my projection. Now, I know that there's, and I can label this. This is the panel with decoration. This is back panel, right? So looking from the top and then flipping these up, right? I know that my bed mold's gonna start here. So I'll draw all these lines and I'm gonna work this whole thing out and then figure out what my projection needs to be. So if I know that this is my farthest point, then basically I want my panel to come out. Well, I know that I've got my bed mold. It's going to be out to here, okay? And then I've got my cap and my cymation. So if I lay out these moldings and I know my cap is going to come to this point and then spring out, I got to figure out where it's going to be. So I'm going to draw my back panel in there because I know it's springing off that. I'm going to put my molding on here because I know I'm landing on that. And then from this point to this point is how far I'm projecting, right? So I'm back here about two and a half inches. You know, three and a half may not be enough. I'm gonna go ahead and go four inches, okay? So that's gonna kick me out. I'm gonna go from this point to this point, be about four inches, and I'm gonna take a, a stick like this to just to kind of read what my projection looks like. But that looks like a, a nice arc for me. So now I've got this, this line figured out. Once I do that, then I'll have this projection and this radius that I can lay out my board and have my cap. All right, so I've got my arc. I scribed a line on here and then just took it over to my bandsaw and cut this arc, okay? So if I put it down on top of here, right, and go by center lines, I can kind of see where this thing is laying out, right? And, and where everything is. So now, because I've drawn it on paper, I've got a down view where I can look at it, I've got a straight on view, right? And I'm building it on paper and not building it up on the wall, getting up on the ladder, back on the ladder, trying to build everything here as much as possible. The hard part of this thing is this curve, okay? Because you can't take a piece of crown and it's gonna be like this and bend it this way, okay? It's gonna, it's gonna to put too much stress on here. So then what I did was I took the back band of the Colonial casing from, from Windsor. And the nice thing about this is that it is, it is not projected out like this, it's a flat molding. So I can actually cut, curve and cut the back side of this molding, right? and cause it to bend. What I did was instead of curving the back side, I just ripped it off, right? So basically I took my pencil, right? I ripped off all this molding, right? What I'm doing is I'm reducing the amount of pressure that this, this molding is gonna take so that I can get it to bend. And you can see I can get it to bend, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just bend this molding around, okay? And it, and it works fairly well. I'm gonna put the cap ends on this, okay? So I'm gonna cap this side and I'm gonna cap the other side so that when I bend this piece around, I can make this joint fit tight, right? And then I can bend it around to a point where I know I can make it fit. So first I'll put on the side pieces and then I'll put on, then I'll bend this top piece around and we should have our cap. And I have matched the White House, raised my level of skill, raised my level of craftsmanship, all by copying the past, all by trying to look at the past and figure out how they did it. And that question, how they did it, can make you a better craftsman. 
Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook, Home Real Work Hull Homes. Sign up for the newsletter. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you following me. I'm Brent Hull. Thanks for watching.